everything is possible for the Lord Almighty and a mechanic. That was a humorous mantra when my grandfather established a small mechanical workshop on the Norwegian West Coast right after Second World War. It started simply, small mechanical products turned into playground equipment, park benches, and even a fully automatic fish cake making machine. Now, more than 70 years later, we're not making fish cake machines anymore. But we have become one of Europe's leading brands for social furniture. And believe it or not, our mission is not to sell as many products as possible. Our mission is to change the world one neighborhood at a time. You might wonder what that means, so please let me explain. The world is getting more and more polarized. We see tendencies towards more conflicts and less cohesion, more antagonism and less trust. And there are strong forces out there trying to divide us instead of bringing us together. It is never a good idea to categorize people as us and them. We know too well from our own history what that might lead to. So what we should do is create more caring meeting places around the world. Places where people can sit down together, share life stories, ideas, and get to know each other. Places where we can build mutual trust and respect. Places where we can celebrate our beautiful diversity and foster inclusion. We call these arenas for everyday democracy. And creating and protecting these arenas is actually one of the most important tasks in the world today. In Scandinavia, we have a concept called Allemansretten. This is best translated to a public access right or the freedom to roam. It basically means that the outdoors belongs to everyone. Isn't that a lovely concept? The right is not just regulated by law, it's also an important part of our cultural DNA. And since this is so important to Vestre, we refuse to be involved in any project with the opposite purpose. For instance, hostile designs. Yes, you have seen them. Public benches with spikes and other obstacles designed to keep homeless people away from our streets and out of our public spaces. When we are asked to produce such benches, and believe me, we have, we are always saying no, simply because it's not democratic to have spikes in the city. If we have created a society where people can't afford a proper place to live, that's actually something that must be dealt with by political reforms, not by spikes. A better future is possible. We can solve this together if we are willing to share resources more fairly than today. But I will tell you this, it's not my job to produce benches designed to cover for basic injustices in our societies. I simply don't want to make money on things that are wrong and hostile designs are never right. So our mission does not stop here. Building more inclusive societies is just one of the major issues we must deal with today. Another huge task we have is to solve the climate crisis and prevent further loss of nature and biodiversity before it's too late. The industrial revolutions brought enormous positive change technologically, economically, and socially, but not without a very high price. The irreparable damage to nature, biodiversity, and man-made climate change brought on by our industrial achievements is itself an increasingly catastrophic threat to the very progress we've made together. The good news, friends, is that there is a way to fix this problem. And here is what we can do. First of all, we need to accelerate the shift towards renewable energy. Renewable energy is now in many cases cheaper than coal and other fossil fuels. This is great news, since we want to reduce the carbon emissions fast and at the same time create millions of new jobs in the renewable sector. And a positive effect is that we get cleaner air in the cities as well. Second, the throwaway society must end now. We need to make products with a long lifespan, things that can be repaired and restored. Products designed for a circular economy where waste in the traditional sense doesn't exist anymore because almost everything can be recycled and reused. Truthfully, it's not that difficult, believe me. If you travel around Norway, even close to the harsh and salty North Sea, you will find Vestre furniture from the 50s and the 60s still out there being enjoyed every day. So let's start 
by banning products designed to have a short lifespan. And third, the push for new products all the time must end. Do we actually need new furniture every five years? I don't think so. It should last for 30 years at least. And if you get tired of the design, well, you should be able to send it back to the factory, have it refurbished, maybe get a new color, so it continues the journey with you or with someone else. If we can share things, change things, rebuild things, and maybe even rent things, instead of buying new things all the time, we will reduce our consumption and our environmental impact significantly. At Vestre, we still believe that everything is possible. That is why we want to take sustainability to the next level. Right now, we are building the most environmentally friendly furniture factory in the world. We call it the PLUS. The PLUS is located in Magnor, a small village one and a half hours from Oslo in Norway. And it is designed by Bjarke Ingels and his team of excellent designers from all over the world at Big Architects. Together, we have created an entirely new typology where people, production, technology, and nature are completely integrated with each other. The PLUS is the first ever furniture factory that meets the highest BREEAM outstanding environmental certification. And as far as I know, we are the first ever Paris-proof furniture factory, meaning we will not only meet the climate targets in the Paris Agreement, we are actually over-fulfilling the agreement by reducing our emissions by more than 50% compared to a similar new factory building. The PLUS runs on 100% renewable energy and has a very advanced energy system with solar panels, heat exchangers, and geothermal energy wells that will reduce our supplied energy need by more than 90% compared to a similar new factory building. The factory itself is made from locally sourced sustainable glue lamb and cross-laminated timber, low carbon concrete, and recycled reinforcement steel. The construction site is fossil free and emission free, as we will utilize electric excavators and machines running on latest generation biofuel. The PLUS will also reuse up to 95% of the process water and replace traditional chemicals with new eco-friendly alternatives. Originally, the municipality was planning for a massive industrial development for the site. Instead, Along came the PLUS, a building whose key objective is to make its footprint as small as possible. The building has been positioned at the edge of what is today a productive pine forest, and the remaining area, around 95% of the site, is now being preserved on nature's own premises. Biodiversity will be enhanced by allowing the forest surrounding the woodland to grow wild, without any forest management, which remove animals' hiding places and sources of food. Many nesting boxes will also be put up to ensure that cavity nesting birds have a place to lay their eggs. And to further improve the biodiversity, we will cover the factory's roof with natural vegetation, which corresponds as closely as possible to that which is currently growing around us. The factory will have its own production flow for refurbishment of old furniture. All products, leaving the plus, will be circular. Some for the first time, others have been manufactured many years ago and are now refurbished. We will not manufacture anything that isn't intended to last forever. And this concept, which we call West Revision Zero, could reduce our use of resources by more than 80%. The PLUS isn't only the most environmentally friendly furniture factory in the world. It's probably the most democratic and transparent factory in the world as well. Here are no fences or closed off areas. The PLUS is actually a tribute to Allemansretten, the freedom to roam. Everyone is invited to watch the manufacturing through the factory's large windows whenever they want. The public can even bring their tent and access our rooftop 24-7. I mean, can you imagine anything more romantic than sharing a kiss with a special someone standing atop the most environmentally friendly furniture factory in the world, surrounded by spectacular architecture and a magical forest? I can't.
My goal is actually for the plus to be named as a must-see destination on TripAdvisor. And I'm pretty sure we will get there with a combination of groundbreaking design and super cool industry 4.0 technology, such as self-teaching robots, autonomous forklifts, and Tesla electric semi-trucks. The beautiful forest surrounding the factory and a 75-acre experience park with art installations, poetry, playgrounds, and other excitement for the whole family to enjoy will sure be a marvel to see. Some people ask me, why are you doing the biggest investment in the Norwegian furniture industry for decades in the middle of a pandemic and the worst recession since the 30s? My response is that there's no time better than now, and this can simply not wait. We want to show the world that it is possible to solve the climate crisis, protect and restore nature and biodiversity, and at the same time create new, enjoyable and profitable jobs. If Vestre can, so can others. There is too much talk about the green shift today. I want to see more and real action. And I want to contribute to a less polarized debate about these issues by bridging the gap between climate activists and people concerned about our economy. Friends, it all comes down to this. What responsibility do private companies have? Is it enough to be profitable, create jobs and pay taxes? No, it's a good start, but people should actually expect more from us. We should be the front runners in the green shift. We should stop earning money on things that are bad for people or bad for the planet. We can do better than before. Yes, we can decouple economic growth from emissions and create a real sustainable future. And we can treat both people and planet with respect and decency without exploiting anyone. Yes, we can do it if we work together and unleash the best of our creative abilities. I started by saying that everything is possible for the Lord Almighty and a mechanic. And I would like to add, for everyone keen to make the world a better place too. If a bench or even a factory can change the world, so can you. You are all invited to visit the Plus when we open next year. But first, let us get more people on board this movement for change. Thank you for your attention.